do have a lot of experience in publishing, and so, um, and obviously, so, several of you do too. So, all I can do is is talk to you from my own experience, um, and others will share theirs too. But, and I think the first thing to be said is that not everyone has to write a book. Everyone wants to write a book, but not everyone should. But um, so that lets you off the hook if you have some think, oh, I should write a book but are not quite sure what to do. All right, so the, the first page is the books that I have had published. Um, the ones on the left are nonfiction, and the three, these three and this one, if you, oh, over here, these four I published in the last year myself. This is the, the Complete Idiot's Guide to Handwriting Analysis was my first book, which came out in 2000. And as a matter of fact, it came out just about six weeks after my daughter was murdered by her boyfriend. So having to go on a book tour after that was kind of difficult. Um, but one thing that's really important in publishing is if you're going to write a book, you're going to have to market it. Otherwise, nobody's going to buy it, which is fine if you're just uh, you know, publishing it for yourself or your family. But if you want it to sell and for other people to get it, then you have to, you have to uh, distribute. The ones on the right are published by Suspense Publishing and uh, Proof of Life is a fiction. That's my latest book, but it's a spiritual, a, a, a supernatural suspense. So I've had experience in having a big publisher. Um, this Idiot's Guide was published by Macmillan and my mysteries were first published by Penguin and now I'm much happier with a small publisher who gives me a lot more control over things like the cover. They have great cover design. With a big publisher, they decide on things like title and cover. They send you an email and they say, here's your cover. We hope you love it as much as we do. And if you say, no, I don't, it's, I'm oh, sorry, it's too late to change it. But with a small publisher, they're, they're happier to work with you on it. So here's my top 10. 10 tips for writing. Write what you love, which obviously if you're writing about spiritual things in this group, you're doing that. Write a good book, which means you have to do the work of learning how to write. Read books on writing, um, whether it's uh, fiction or nonfiction, they're very different. So I, I've got, I think I counted over 60 books on writing, some of them on uh, fiction and some on nonfiction because they're really different things. Leave out most of the verbs. This is especially true in fiction, but in nonfiction too, the verbs, those L-Y words are also the I-N-G words, uh, they weaken the writing because you're telling the person how they should feel. And uh, the, it's better to use strong verbs rather than the uh, L-Y ones. Kill your darlings, that means don't overwrite. You know, everybody has their own style and their own voice in writing, but uh, these days people respond better to clean writing without lots of big overblown sorts of uh, descriptions. Uh, exclamation points are a big no-no. You should have no more than a couple in the whole book. When people critique your story or your manuscript, and if three people are saying the same things that's negative, then listen. It's still your choice in the end what to keep and what not to keep. But if several people are saying the same thing, it's important to listen to them. And in that vein, you should always hire a good editor. Even when I have uh, books that I'm publishing through a publisher, I have an, an editor that I work with first. And after we're done with the whole book, then I hand it over to the editor at the publishing house. Don't show your book to your relatives and friends until you're done because, you know, they're going to usually say, oh, it's wonderful, I love it, and they may or may not believe that, but they're just not equipped to give you the proper critique. That's why you need an editor. And then the most important thing, after you've done all of those things, is to market the book and we're going to talk about some things to do with that so just quickly going through there are two kinds of writers there's those like me who outline and those 
who go by the seat of their pants. We call them pantsers, and they just start writing, which is either one is fine, but you're still going to have to go back and, and uh, edit. If you write an outline, what I find helpful is, I mean, my outline is always flexible and it can change. Like in, in one of my fiction books, I got to the middle of the book and I realized that what I had planned for the ending of the book needed to come there. So I had to rewrite the outline a bit. But an outline helps you get your ideas in order. And that's important. You want to be, um, you know, orderly. If you have a critique group, or you join a critique group, or you form one, it should be, um, you know, there's lots of writers groups, and they'll talk about all different kinds of writing, but what I found most helpful is to be in a group of people who are writing the same kinds of things that you are writing, so that they'll understand the conventions of that genre. So you could go on to the um, Facebook page and, and ask, is any, would anybody like to be in a critique group, so that you can talk about each other's writing and as, as an initial run through. And then, as I've said before, hire a professional editor. Next, you can choose, you can either, if you want to get a major publishing house, like Hay House, you have to have an agent. And getting an agent is really difficult, and I have had seven of them. And what I found is that they, most of the ones that I know don't do any work. They want you to do all the work and then they may introduce you to um, some publishers, but it's very difficult to get an agent and then to get a good big publishing house. But there are lots of small publishing houses too that you don't have to have an agent. Um, if you are going with an agent, or even if you're going directly to a publisher, I recommend this book that I've put here, and I will make these slides available to Wendy so that you don't have to write all this stuff down. But Author 101 Best-Selling Book Proposals shows you exactly how to do it. Uh, on the other hand, if you're going to self-publish, which is, as I showed you, I've done with my nonfiction books, I used KDP, which doesn't cost anything at all. And I was able to design my own covers quite well with, with what they have, and they show you how to do it. They've got videos to show you every step of the way. Uh, there are Book Baby, which does cost, and Ingram Spark, and I'm sure that we'll hear uh, from Anne about her publishing. Oops. But you'll have to do the cover design and, and uh, formatting and all that sort of thing. And you have to decide if you're going to have, if you're going to write an ebook, a print book, which you probably do both. And then there's also Audible uh, for audiobooks, and I have now five of my books are on Audible. And ACX is a company that works with, or Amazon owns them, and they own Audible. And what you do is you post on their site um, a, an excerpt from your book, and then uh, narrators will send you a little uh, audition, and you choose between who you like. And it doesn't cost anything if you, if you do a royalty share. You can choose an option where you pay the narrator, which could cost you a couple thousand bucks, or you can do it for free and have a royalty share. And the share is something like, I don't know, I'm not even sure, but Amazon, of course, gets most of it. It's like maybe 60, 40, and then the narrator and the author um, split the 40%. So you don't make much money on it, but it gets the name out there. The writing process, if you want to be a writer, you have to read and write in the genre that you're writing in. See what other people do that you like, that works for them, that's successful, and also what doesn't work. So reading is important too. It's good to set goals. Some people will set, you know, I'm going to write for two hours every day, or I, I personally prefer to set a goal of a thousand words a day, which is only a couple of pages. It sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. Um, I don't do it every day, but setting goals is good because it helps you to get there faster. And you want to find a place, a good place to work. Now, I live most of the time by myself. Right now I have a house guest, but um, the cat allows me uninterrupted time and I have a good place. So find a place where you can be uninterrupted for whatever your goal time is. And set up the space 
in a way that you're going to enjoy it, whether it's lighting a candle, putting on music, and any way that gets you in the mood. If you have, well, writer's block, you know, it's a funny thing people say, talk about writer's block. If you write professionally, you can't afford to have writer's block. If you're a plumber, you can't say, I have plumber's block and I'm not going to go to work today. But of course, if you're just writing because you enjoy it, that's your choice. But if you're, if you're really feeling like you just can't write, it's okay, take a break and research. Now, in my book, uh, Proof of Life, I had some wonderful friends, including Wendy, that made all the difference in the world in my seance scene in the book. And people comment on it all the time. Mediums comment about how realistic it is. And research what you're, whatever you're specifically writing about. It's really important. Then finally, there's the marketing. You could hire a publicist. I've had several, several publicists with mixed results. The latest one, he has, um, well, some of them can be like $3,000 a month, which is way out of my budget. But the one that I just used, I had him for six months, and he has three levels, 500, 750, or 1,000 a month. And I hired him for 750 a month, and he did a lot of social media work for me. I don't know at this point whether it really helped or not. But if you're not gonna hire a publicist and you're working on a shoestring, um, the Author 101 series has a book for that too. Best, uh, best selling book publicity, The Insider's Guide to Promoting Your Book and Yourself. Because if you're not going to promote, you may as well not write the book, as I said at the outset. You need a website. Bookmarks are helpful. I take my bookmarks everywhere I go and I find excuses to hand them out to everybody, even the checker in the grocery store, um, anywhere you go. Some people will print out a little excerpt of the book and hand that out. That could be helpful. You need a social media presence, a Facebook page, and not everybody likes that, but you really need it if you're going to market a book. Um, Instagram, I don't do, but some people find helpful. Writing a blog is a good idea because you, you regularly connect. The whole key is to connect with people, not to sell books but to connect with people and selling books will be an outgrowth of that. Um, Amazon ads, something to consider. I have a friend, I'm, this is my next thing to try. Uh, a friend of mine has a book that she said sold 300 copies in three days with an Amazon ad that cost her $100. So that's worth looking into. There's BookBub um, and BookBub, you may or may not know, but it's um, a uh, book subscription, uh, I don't know, how, what do you call it? It's a subscription service, and every day they send you a list of about five or six books, uh, e-books, that are uh, free or very low cost. Now, when I first took out a BookBub ad, it cost about $300, and I made $6,000 in sales because they have over ooh, something like 2 million people who were readers in my genre. Now, as they've increased their readership, so the price has increased. I just looked this morning, and the kind of book that I write, it's an ad is now $840. It's still probably worth it. I always make way more money than I spend when I get a BookBub ad. And I looked up uh, spiritual books, and that was, I think, $290, so much easier. Uh, okay, doing podcast interviews. I just did an interview with Barry Eaton, who, uh, thanks to Wendy's referral, and that's going to be on uh, August 3rd. And uh, we talked about all kinds of things, but I was able to talk about the new book. And there's lots of podcast interviews, and people who do them are always looking for good guests. You can give, if you're a good speaker, give talks. If you're not a good speaker yet, or you, you're afraid of speaking, go to Toastmasters and they will teach you how to speak. Uh, there's loads of clubs that are always looking for speakers like the Rotary Club or um, you know, networking groups, women's clubs, men's clubs, and they're always looking for speakers. You can sell books there. Write articles for various magazines make friends with bookstore personnel so that they will hand sell your books. And I like to do a book launch party. This costs a little money and you, you can make it as small or as big as you like. 
I had one recently. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures uh, for, for proof of life. And what I did was I booked a restaurant that I knew needed some help. They were new and they need to have, um, you know, more people coming. And then I advertise it as a networking event. This is a book launch party and networking. And anybody who brings a prize can have 30 seconds at the microphone to talk about their business or what they do. So that way everybody wins. And then I get a whole bunch of prizes and I, I do drawings for, for gifts and we have food. Now, the food in this case, it costs $600, but I didn't have to bear the whole cost of that because I invited two other authors to have a table with their books so they could sell as well. So it only cost me $200. So there's lots of different ways you can do that. You could just have wine and cheese. Uh, you could do it at a bookstore. There's many ways of doing it, but it's a good way to get the word out. And finally, you can do a book trailer. And I'm gonna show you mine. It's only 30 seconds long. It cost me, I think, $60. And if you haven't found Fiverr, fiverr.com, you can get any number of, of uh, helpful marketing uh, things there, which we could talk about if you're interested. So here's my book launch party, and I had over 80 people there, and most of them bought books. So that was really good, and we had little, little cupcake things and, and Mexican food, because it was a Mexican food restaurant. And finally, here's my 30-second uh, book trailer. <laughs> 